right, so there we successfully did battle number five. Lost 9% of our men. So, moving on to 1167. Tensions between King Henry and King Louis have been increasing for over a decade, not least of because of Henry's in intervention of the Civil War in the Duchy of Brittany that had broken out following the death of Duke Conan III in 1148. By 1164, Henry had annexed the whole of Brittany and made his son Geoffrey Duke. He also made inroads into other territories which traditionally owed fealty to the King of France. In 1167, open war broke out once more between the two kings. Louis has attacked Normandy, but Henry is determined to win the war at a stroke by capturing Chaumont sur Epte, where Louis keeps his main military arsenal. Okay, so now we have a, a branching choice here. We can settle in for a long ch siege, in which case there's a chance that Louis may send a relief force. Or we can uh, uh, try to assault the fortress right now. Now, my chances of success vary upon how well we did in the previous battle. Or the previous battle, we did pretty good, so the early assault chance is 30%. Even if the assault succeeds, it may be costly in your men's lives. So that's telling you that there's another follow-up battle to this that you, you kind of need to preserve your army for. 30% um, is, is pretty good for the first stage of a siege, but I, even that is a little iffy. So I think we're going to we'll do the long siege. We might be fighting a, relieving, a relief force battle if we choose this option, but that's fine. We, our army is in pretty good shape. I think we can handle that. The siege of the fortress of Chaumont sur Epte continues. So, um, yeah, and the losses, we had losses in the siege, though, of 900 men, as you can see. So we, we took a little bit of siege attrition. Now, the assault is a 61%. And if we just continue the siege, uh, there's a high chance that uh, King Louis is going to send a relief force, in which case we have a relief force battle. Um, do, 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 do. Or we can assault right now at 61%. 61 is pretty good. Let's go for the assault. Your assault succeeded. Chaumont sur Epte has fallen to the English. We lost 892 men. You <laughs> successfully uh, did the victory conditions for them. So we, we actually won that one just by clicking two buttons. So that was pretty lucky. <laughs> so we beat the French and took another fortress. That's our second fortress we gained. So yeah, managed to win that one without a battle because they don't have a siege. They don't have a siege. They don't have siege battles here. They don't have storming of fortress. Uh, 1170. Later in 1167, a truce was agreed between Henry and Louis. In 1166, King Diamet Mac Mercata of Leinster was deposed by the High King of Ireland. And don't even ask me to pronounce that. He fled Ireland and sought help from King Henry, who gave him permission to recruit mercenaries from his empire in turn for swearing fealty to Henry. Several lords of the Welsh marchers agreed to help, including Richard de Clare, Earl of Pembroke, who took Diamate's eldest daughter in marriage and was named heir to the throne of Leinster. Ooh, initial landings in 1169 met with considerable success. The combined Norman and Irish force taking the North Irish city of Wexford and retaking Leinster. Declare did not arrive with the main force till summer of 1170, and the Allies then decided to march on Dublin, where High King Ru Ruiardi has deployed a large army to intercept them. Your old army has been disbanded. Aw. For the next battle, you'll have 1166 points. So yeah, there's been enough. There's been a passage of time that we have to get a whole new army. But that's fine. We have one choice, and that's to offer battle versus the Irish. We're going to fight the Irish next in Ireland. So let's see. And I, I believe our commander is going to be Richard de Clare this time. So here we are, Anglo-Irish versus Irish, straight up battle. Let's see how this goes. No 
Okay, let's take a look. Before we buy the forces, you always want to look at the map. So this map is dominated by two hills in the middle with rough ground on the top. So I think what we're going to do here is take a quick break. And when I come back, we'll uh, decide how we're going to spend our points. We have 606 points to spend. So guys, stay tuned. I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, I'm back. Let's go ahead and select our forces here. All right, what do we got? Yeah, so like I was saying, we have one big lumpy hill with rough terrain on the on all over it, right in the middle of the battlefield. So it would be it would be behoove it would behoove us to recruit uh, recruit some medium infantry to go ahead and fight on this terrain here. Now we already have some, I see. We have some Irish Kerns and Irish Foot. Yeah, these are bo both medium foot infantry. So, yeah, we definitely want to use those to take the hill because the heavy troops are going to be terrible in this rough ground. So that's probably a good idea. We also have some Irish Kerns down here. These are also mediums. Hang on, a, hang on one second here. Looks like Bradford is joining us in studio. He wanted to come in and visit. So my dog Bradford is here. Hey Bradford, how you doing? So he was scratching at the door. He wanted to come in and say hello. So yeah, we have Irish foot and Irish kerns. These are both medium troops. This is a, um, yeah, the Irish foot looks like they're completely unprotected. He, they have a big honk and two-handed ax, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah, Irish foot with two-handed axes. So, yeah, consider them pretty good on the attack, not so good on the defense. Irish kerns, uh, a little bit better, a little bit more balanced. They got a light spear and a sword and a small shield, so they're a little bit protected. But also, and that, and that's actually not a spear. It's actually a, well, it looks like it's a javelin. So maybe they use the javelin as a spear too, who knows. But yeah, medium foot with javelins. That makes them an impact foot because they tend to like throw their javelins and then they charge. So we can use we can use these guys to take this rough ground on the hill. We already have considerable numbers. We have six of six of both categories, so we're actually pretty good in that department. Since we conquered Wales, they give us an option to buy up to six Welsh longbowmen. So that's very generous. We might take them up on that offer. We only have one knight on the knight and sergeant on the map right now, but we can buy three more. Uh, 
which I guess we, I guess that's not a bad idea. Yeah, there's a hill here that's probably going to be fought over, and the knights might be good for sweeping them off the hill. And kind of like a little panzer attack, because there's no rough terrain up there. So, yeah, that's the battlefield. A lot of medium troops. I think we have plenty of medium troops. I don't think I need to recruit any more. 12 is plenty. So let's go spend our points on some of the more heavy spear. Oh, I got Osman, too. Oh, so now we get to recruit the Osman. Now, these are uh, undrilled heavy foot. Um, yeah, ba basically, these are the, the Irish foot, but these actually have some armor on them. And they're considered heavy foot instead. It's interesting. Not too many spearmen. We don't have a lot of spearmen. There are no options for buying armored spearmen in particular, I notice. So we probably want to buy some more regular spearmen. And I wouldn't mind having some a lot a bunch of light troops as well. Because those are always useful. We have a slinger, that's fun. Yeah, let's go ahead and rent, let's go ahead and, and hog all the light troops. So we have enough to deal. Because we might I, we're fighting Irish, and I I expect to see so, so a, a whole swarm of Irish light troops. So we need something to counter them. So let's go ahead and max those out. That gives us 498 points. Um, let's see if we can afford all three of the knights. That gives us 260, 276 left. That's a Welsh longbowman. Let me think about that. I think we want to go ahead and, yeah get all four spearmen if we can. That gives us 132 left. I don't think we need the Osman. Maybe. Let me think about that. But I think we want all, all four spearmen. That'll give us five spearmen. That's a, an unusually low amount of spearmen for a typical medieval battle. Can I make use of Welsh Longbowmen here? Let me think. Yeah, well, using Welsh Longbowmen here might be tricky. I mean, I guess maybe we could put them in, the, in this forest or something. We definitely don't want crossbows because I don't expect the Irish to have a lot of heavily armored troops. So I don't. Th I think we'll pass on the crossbowmen. Since we don't want any more of those, that means, yeah, let's go ahead and pick up one longbowman that gives us ninety. Pick up another that gives us forty-eight. I guess then we could get an Osman or a Sergeant. Or another Longbow. <laughs> yeah, we could just go for a third Longbow. I'm a little worried, though. That we might, we, yeah, no, we got... Oh, gosh, we got 12 medium infantry. Let's just go ahead and get another Longbowman. Gives us six points left. And I get another general. Great. Okay, so let's set up. Uh, the medium troops are all going to go over here because they're going to want to grab this hill. Some Irish kerns to go with our other Irish. Here's a spearman. Yeah, let's move all these kerns down here. Unless we want some, yeah, we might actually, we could use some over here, though. Along with the longbows. Put 
those longbows on the flank. You got these spearmen will go here in the, the open terrain. That's, all, that's where all the spearmen will go. The knights behind the well, no, we probably want some on the flank, don't we? That's our commander in chief, Richard Declare. I'm gonna have Richard go here. The other three knights will go on the flank. Oh, what about this flank though? This is actually not a bad place to flank as well. Jeez, I wish I had, maybe I should have gotten more sar uh, some sergeants. Yeah. E Oops. Let's put our light archers over here for sure, because we want to grab this rough, these rough hexes. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to put any cavalry on this flank. I'm just going to hold this hill, and. Right, because, yeah, even if I flank him, the, with even if I put cavalry here, if he doesn't have anything here, there's nothing for my cavalry to do because I can't really charge into this rough terrain. So let's stick with the plan. Let's put all three of the, the, all three of the knights on the left flank. And we'll put some javelins over here as well. So if there's any light troops in the way, we can clear them out. those guys the sub general here controls almost all the infantry although we can switch that around let me move you to here we have one more general let's put let's put a general over here on this longbow. We'll have a longbow there. Some kerns. Yeah, a mixture of kerns and uh, Irish foot. Richard will be the central reserve, basically. And then we have a left flanking force here. So the idea here is use our medium troops, grab these hills. Um, We'll move up our, our heavy spearmen in the center, and then these light troops will see if we can grab this hill if need be. And then the cavalry could take the help take the hill as well because there's no rough terrain up there. So that looks like my battle plan. Uh, I got my oh yeah. Well, the other thing we have to do is attach units to the new general. Don't want to forget that. So you're gonna have the right flank infantry. Mostly Irish, <laughs> Irish and Welsh. What's your command radius? Okay, so you can take these two as well. And these guys. Great, so then you're in charge of there with a little bit of overlap. That'll work, I think. Let me attach you to this group. And you to that group. These guys are all hooked up. Oh, not quite. So you 
guys are going to follow Henry Lepore in the battle. And we got Richard Declare in reserve along with these Irish Kerns. Okay, that looks good. Let's uh, let's begin the battle. There's the Irish. Let's see what they're gonna do. They oh, okay. So now this is interesting. They've decided to yield the strategic initiative to us. It looks like they are not advancing. So um, we're gonna have to figure out an offensive battle plan to break their line, which is out in the open. Not a bad strategy because most of our infantry actually is, the vast majority of our infantry is medium foot, which is basically on par with their medium foot. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to have the edges with our knights and with our spearmen, although the spearmen are a little tricky because they have to survive the charge phase to do any good. I'm kind of glad I bought these... Uh, I'm kind of glad we got so many Welsh archers because that's going to really help. We can put the, like, we have a Welsh archer over, a Welsh longbow over here. We put them up on the hill, and these guys aren't going to be pleased. They're probably going to be forced to charge my hill by doing that. And so that's what we'll do. We'll try to set up the longbowmen on these hills, and then we'll goad them into attacking pr our prepared positions. And that's the great, that's the great use of, of, of uh, archery is what it does, what it forces the enemy to do to deal with it. If they uh, if they want to stop from getting shot at forever, they have to do something about the archers, which forces them out of their turtle mode, basically. Because that looks like what they're doing. The Irish are going to try to play turtle back here. They also have some forces of, in this in these woods. We have to we don't know what what they have hiding in these woods, so we have to be careful about that too. And um, we didn't put any cavalry on this flank. He's got his cavalry over here. So that also might be an issue, but we'll see how it goes. We have a lot. There's some There's some rough terrain that will make life for the cavalry difficult, so I'm not too worried. But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I have to be careful, though, because I can't really take this cavalry and charge it willy-nilly into their lines because he could have some forces hiding in these woods. You never know. Anyway, let's go ahead and move up our light troops. Try to get this hill. advance the whole line let me think yeah why not yeah because we want to get up on those hills same here general advance Knights to just keep pace. All right, end turn. Moving up. His, oh, now he's moving up. Yeah, it was a fake out. <laughs> it was a fake out. Maybe he was trying to decide what we were going to do. Yeah, he's got a bunch of light archers over here. grab this we want definitely want to grab this rough terrain from him prevent him from taking seeking refuge in it picked irish foot oh goodness picked irish foot Quality superior, oh goodness. Yeah, 
No shield, big giant axe. Heavy weapon. Also considered medium foot. Okay. How come we didn't get any picked Irish? Alright, let's try to kill some picked Irish foot here with some missile fire. a javelin, sadly. I'm thinking of leaving these kerns in the woods. Definitely, yeah, let's just leave you in the woods here. I do want this longbowman up here, though. Let's try to get him up there and see through this rough patch, at least. Send this current to here. And everybody else advance. Okay. Slingers are not in range. Advance. for this turn. He's got his own slingers. Slingers have a range of two. Looks like there's a race to take this hill. and chase off these javelins. Ugh. I wish it would have stopped here, but that's okay. Alright, my longbowman can shoot these kerns here pretty good. It's 
tempting to charge his light archers and javelin men, but the problem is the knights might go overboard and chase them off the map, which would be kind of a disaster, so I don't know if I want to do that. You always have to plan for the your, your over-eager, impetuous knights to do something stupid. Yeah, it'd be fun to charge all three of them right now, just so they don't shoot at me, but the possibility of them overdoing it is real. And it also, he still might have something left hiding in these woods, for all we know. Hmm. On the other hand, how bad could it be? I mean, they probably won't... They'll probably stop at the, at the, at the woods. My knights would probably stop before going in the woods. They usually... They usually stop pursuing when they're about to go into really terrible terrain, so... So maybe the damage will be limited if we... Yeah, maybe that's not... That's true. Because of the woods here. So unless there's something hiding in there that's really bad, this should be okay to do. I mean, we're obviously not going to catch him, but it's a way of moving the knights forward and get rid of, getting rid of these guys. Now, our light troops. We already shot at these kerns. Let's shoot at them again. That's the slingers. Uh, can't get them again, so let's just shoot this one. Pretty good damage. And then we'll shoot at him again. Oh, I can't. Uh, damn. Gotta shoot at this guy. So we have to spread out the damage a bit, but that's okay. So are these guys considered pursuing? No. None of them are considered pursuing, so that's good news. So they're, they're available to move next turn. Let's go ahead and shoo away these guys. Oh no, you left your mountain. I don't know if that was a good idea. Move up Henry, or not Henry, Richard, I should say. Richard Declare, the lawful Lord of Leinster. All right, here's my light troop line. Uh, what are we going to do? All right, let's do massive amounts of firepower on this one Kern unit. Or Irish foot, excuse me. Oof, 10 to 30. Light javelins, 6 to 18. Build firm, boy, it's a tough Irish foot. And then this guy, he can't, yeah, he's gotta sh get this guy. All right, not bad for light troops. Oh yeah, I got a uh, longbow. Move the longbow into this rough patch. And... Yeah, why not? 2 to 12 on the... Javelins. I'm gonna go ahead and keep these kerns hidden. And then keep moving these guys up to try to take the hill before he does.
Yeah, we're moderately disordered here. Longbowmen are fine, though. I think it's because we're on a slope and a rough... Yeah, it's a difficult slope, that's what it is. Yeah, we have to get off this difficult slope. As a matter of fact, this might have been a bad move. <laughs> because here's the thing, if he can grab these hexes before I do... Is that even... Oh, shit, he could do it. Yeah, that might have actually been a bad move. Mm. Can he go up a difficult slope and in a rough ground? Does he have them to... I can't remember if he's got the movement points for that. He might. Oh yeah, that might have been bad. Tell you what, this guy here, let's undo this move. Because that might be a disaster. Right, let's just move to here. Hopefully, hopefully these uh, light troops can keep him off the keep him off the hill for my longbowmen to get up there. They just have to hold for one round and not run away. <laughs> it's a bit of a tall order, I admit. Just have to not run away, light troops. Ha ha. Like that's gonna happen. Okay. All right, we got at least this part of the hill. This is a, this, these guys here are in a little bit of a dicey situation, though. And yeah, I'm not gonna move that guy. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see. It's a, let's see if we can get on that hill. Uh oh, he's running, but he didn't take the hill. That held. Okay, good, good. That was that was huge. These guys are running away, and now they're on the hill. But that's okay because so are we. Oh no, he's on that hill over there, shit. Uh, that's bad. So we lost the race for that hill, Hex. Could have been worse. If this guy had been one forward, it would have been even worse. Looks like our javelins are under pressure over there. There's a lot of kerns. A lot of Irish. Yeah, our longbowmen are not in a good position right now on the on that difficult slope. These guys are just being jerks. That's a rear attack. He caught me. He caught my my skirmisher. Oh, what a bother. Actually, we can't we can move the longbowman up, but I have to attack him. Oh, that's horrible. How about this? Is this any better? No, it's not. But that's the only way I can get there is if I break his zone of control by attacking him with one of these guys. Oy. Turn to face these infantry. Yeah, again, I think I think the pursuit will stop at the forest, so I'm I'm okay by doing this. Yep. Yeah, go away. Stop! Come back! No! No! Bad knights! Bad! You impetuous fool! No! No! <laughs> Come back! I need you. Oh, shit. All right, what do we do? What do we do? Well, let me see. I have some javelins here. Let's run up and javelin these, these guys in the back. For six to 18. I'll set up a flank here, but I don't think this guy's going to survive. Let me do this attack first, because I doubt he's going to hold. 
Yeah, he breaks. I didn't think he would hold. Poor Slinger. You weren't supposed to get caught, Slinger. You're supposed to run. You're supposed to run from superior forces. All right, what we're going to do here is these longbows are going to shoot point blank for 10 to 32. <laughs> Old firm. Boy, that's a lot of damage. And then to keep my longbowmen from getting charged, we're going to charge him in the flank. It's not going to drop cohesiveness, but it will protect my longbows. Okay, good deal. I think my knight, I think one knight and sergeant can handle two Irish, two Irishmen, a kern and a foot. I think they'll be okay there. Especially since this guy should be, yeah, he's not pursuing. So two knights should be able to handle two Irish. I'm not going to reinforce over there. Instead, I'm going to move up here this way. And potentially get some flankage going there. Now, since these guys are being attacked there, if these guys do nothing, next turn they can flank flank this group. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hold with uh, Rainer. Rainer Bath. Interesting. I don't know if we want to go there because then these guys attack me um, going down the slope. We don't think we want that. Yeah, he could move to block the flank by taking this Irish foot, moving it to here, and that would block the, f the flank. If he does that, oh well. That's the thing I can do. Uh, let's check out this battle. Oh, we got a 47 to 1 versus Kearns. Nice. Heavy, heavy versus medium in the open. That's, that's the kind of odds you get. I think those spears are just going to hold the line here. Yeah, when we're on the slope, we're moderately disordered, but when we're on the hilltop, we're steady. So we can't really hold the difficult slopes. you uh, off the difficult slope. I could move you there and then, yeah, turn you. Get ready for a flank. Let's do that. Not very four to sixteen is not that impressive for a point blank Welsh longbowman. Yeah, this is a tricky. This is a tricky little pickle. We got different. Diff these are both difficult slopes, so attacking him here is not going to be fun. That's the only way I can get my longbowman up on the hill by attacking this guy and not losing, having my clock cleaned. I mean, I guess I got two chances at it, right? That's one way to look at it. I can try. Yeah, let's do. Let's do it attacking from the flank. We'll have a little bit better odds if we do it this way. Make sure to go to this hex first or square first, and then attack. Yeah, our odds should be a little better. 
Hey, hey, we got it. Great, so now the Longbowmen can move up. And, oh boy, they have a lot of targets, don't they? A target-rich environment. And they're pretty well defended, too, because they have to go up a difficult slope into the rough to attack them. I wonder if this guy should charge. Ugh. I don't know. Maybe. Sure. I kind of want that hill. I kind of want it. And so maybe if we put some pressure on, a little bit of luck, maybe we can force them off by numbers. All right, so now where are my longbowmen going to shoot? We can shoot over here for 6 to 20. Ew. But if I if I go for either of these targets, then I'm showing my flank to these to one of the others, so maybe that's not great. So instead, let's shoot down further. Let's say, oh, we only do 2 to 10. Oh, well, I <laughs> can't. I would love to do 6 to 20, but that might not be possible. Tell you what, let's go ahead and shoot up this guy. With the light archers. can't see him with these guys, that's unfortunate. Yeah, 6 to 20 on the javelin man. Disrupt, good job. These guys... I don't think these guys can do it. Well, he should be able to shoot the javelin man, but I don't know if we want to do that. See anybody? No, I can't. Well, let's undo that. I guess we'll go over here. Go ahead and move you up. I'll bet you we could fragment this these guys if I hit them with the longbow. But the problem was then I could get flank attack by those guys. I could just do a regular 2 to 10 and not change my arc attack. I can do a non-turn. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to do a non-turn archery attack 2 to 10. Held firm, okay. It is worth a shot. You can actually do pretty good on a charge here. Good, looking good. Let's keep these guys hidden in the woods. Mm, that's a pretty even battle. Irish foot versus Irish foot. turn this way. Mm, tricky, tricky, tricky battle. Very tricky. Let's move Henry up again a little bit. Javelin's back. I'm intentionally not going to attack with these guys because these guys could come pour down and flank me from the hill. I don't really want that, so I just want to stand at the defense here. Yeah, 
to keep these guys up there, these guys in the woods, and that's it. Oh yeah, that, I forgot about that guy. That's our poor javelin man that's trapped. Here's a charge here in the center, indecisive. They were on roughly equal terms, at least in the charge phase. Cavalry charges right into our uh, Irish foot, but our I Irish foot held. And that ruined my flank. I had a flank lined up. Bastards. They don't want me to have any fun. Put massively advantage our javelin, but he held firm. Now he breaks. Now the battle for the hill continues here. Uh, he only has a slight advantage, which is good. We have two to one on him, though. Uh oh. Fall back, that's bad. Now the other one is by himself. Looks like we have the edge there. There's a disrupt and he falls back. Alright. Oh, and I have another sad announcement to make, men. It looks like the clock is against us. It is 4 o'clock, and that is going to be it for today's stream. I have to take Bradford for his 4 o'clock walk. Bradford is very insistent upon that, right? Aren't you, Bradford? I know. <laughs> So that's going to be it for today. Um, no stream tomorrow, but we'll be playing uh, Shadow Empire again on Friday. And I think we want to, I want to continue this battle because this is another great battle. So I tell you what, I don't have anything on the schedule for Saturday. Why don't we plan on playing, uh, playing this again uh, on a Saturday stream for this Saturday? I will update my schedule accordingly. So go, yeah, let's go ahead and plan on it. Sometime, uh, sometime on Saturday we will pick this up again, probably at noon. And we'll continue this uh, battle, and we'll continue the Angevin campaign, and see if we can complete the Angevin campaign. By the way, I'm also taking the recordings here, and I'm putting these battles on, on my YouTube channel. I started work on that last night. So all of these, uh, all of these Field of Glory medieval battles will be on my YouTube channel, hopefully soon. And I'm gonna, I'm working on editing them and putting them, you know, battle by battle. So they're somewhat well organized. So anyways, guys, that's it for today. Uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Here we are. Hey, there's Adelbard. Adelbard, good to see ya. Welcome, welcome back. All right, here we are on the battlefield versus these Irish. Yeah, we are uh, engaged here in the center. We have a big battle going on on this hill. And, uh, yeah, my knights are chasing light troops around, which is not the best use for knights. So what we're going to do here is we'll take this guy. This is my commander, or sub-commander, Henry Lepour. We'll go here. We'll try to take on these kerns. In the meantime, we're going to get shot by these light troops, but they, there's nothing that we can do about it. They're in the forest. Uh, I could keep trying to pursue these guys, but that seems like a waste of time. So I think we'll just turn this way and get ready to come back on the hill here. Yeah, so there's an Irish foot and an Irish kern we're up against. We should be able to scatter them fairly easily, though, I would think. Anyway, here's my own javelin, and let's take a shot at that one there. Or do I want to shoot him in the back? Maybe. Yeah, let me just shoot this guy in the back. 
suffer massive casualties. Yeah, we're throwing javelins down the hill on them, too, from the rear, so... It's actually pretty effective. Now, do I charge with these guys into his... I could. Yeah, why not? We're knights. We do things like that. Alright, great. So now this guy can hopefully originally come down here and flank him, and then this guy can maybe... Yeah, this one, can be the, our leader can come by. We're going to get shot at by these light troops. I don't like it any more than you guys do, but I, we have to tolerate it because <laughs> there's nothing else we can do about it. I can't send my knights chasing these guys all over the edge of the map. That's a huge waste of, uh, of armored troops. So do I have a flank here? No, I don't. In fact, I can't even attack them because of those kerns. Exercising the zone of control. I could attack these guys... Actually, it looks like a pretty darn good attack. Let's do it. We stand to win that one in the long run, so I'm going to attack. Now, here's a flank. I just realized right here, this is going to be a flank. Let's do it. So there's the automatic drop down to disruption. And he's fragmented. Now let's see if we can finish him off with the, uh, the, other, the other flank here. 88%. There's the break. And off they go to the ra off they go to the races. Now this guy here. Oh, these are my Welsh longbowmen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shoot at these guys. Great. Okay. So far so good. Let's see how this battle is gonna go. 43 to 2, not bad. Okay, indecisive. Alright, let's uh, push these guys, these spearmen up, just to threaten some flanks. I'm going to move this guy this way, and then I'll turn this way. Right, so if this guy comes in down here and decides to hit my Welsh longbowmen, these guys could then flank him, okay? So I'm preparing for this guy, this Irish foot, charging my Welsh longbowmen, which I think is a real possibility. But if they do that and my Welsh can hold, then we'll be able to flank with the flank him with these spearmen. So same, same deal here. We're going to set up set up a flank possibility. We're going to turn this way. So we'll be able to flank these guys the next turn, but that could be prevented by these guys simply attacking me. So that may not that may not work. Now these guys have managed to push his uh, commander all the way back to here, surprisingly. So they're getting a little exposed, which is worrisome. I could charge these guys who are disrupted. I don't know if that's the greatest idea, though, because then these guys could flank me if I did that, so I don't think I'm going to do that. So I'll tell you what, I'm just going to turn this way. And that's another possible way of flanking this guy unless they block it with a zone to control or something. I've got these Kerns and Irish foot up on this hill, but it looks like they need to come down because there's no action up here. Yeah, I've got this fight here. Oof, this is a tough one because we're going up and into the rough. I could... Yeah, I'll actually lose on that one too, but at least I'm putting some extra pressure on them. I, I sent my Kerns in though. Yeah, no chance. Yeah, this guy, uh, my Javelins are fleeing here. What's my uh, odds here? Ugh, not great. Yeah, it's time to bring my guys down from the hill. First of all, let's do this attack and see what happens. See if I get pushed back. Because we're at a disadvantage here. Nope, indecisive. That's actually a great result. Because I'm wearing down his uh, noble cavalry unit here. 
Yeah, every time we do even odds, infantry versus cavalry, we win, basically, because there's only 126 men in this formation where I got, like, we start at 240, so. Yeah, trading man for horse is obviously a good deal for us. gonna move up. Yeah, you gotta come off. It's time to come off the hill, sadly. Gotta get in the real battle here. Now I'm debating what to do with this battle. I really don't want to get forced off this. I really want to get rid of these guys on the hill. But they made it. They're, it's tough because it's broken ground and it's up on a hill. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Let's charge in with With the Kerns. Or with the Irish foot. Probably the Irish foot would be better. A little bit. We got an indecisive result, which is about as good as we can hope for. Maybe it would have been better to move this guy to here and set up a flank. I guess I can still work on that. Let's turn you this you this way. The idea is we're going to try to come around here and, well, I don't know. I don't think we can get the flank on him now, though. We shouldn't have attacked from this hex. We should have waited and attacked from this hex and then flanked him. That would have been smart. Yeah, we're, uh, we're at a big disadvantage on this hill fight. Sad to say. I guess we shouldn't have turned. We should have faced this way because it looks like these guys are going to get routed off. Meanwhile, our longbowmen are very nicely perched up on this hill. We can do a ton of damage. Yeah, I'm going to turn and shoot at these guys 6 to 20. Oh, 10 to 30 on that one. Oh, shit. Yeah, let's take the 10 to 30. <laughs> that's like, that's like, uh, yeah, that's almost like a, yeah, 30 is one-eighth of their force, right? Because there's 30 men per, per man, <laughs> so, yeah, that's just butchery right there. Let's see how we do here. Got a little bit of an advantage. And this guy, we're wearing this other unit down considerably. Yes, banner's looking very tattered. Meanwhile, let's keep shooting with these archers. That's a javelin unit. Yeah, let's shoot at the javelin unit. These guys have been hiding in the woods, but it looks like the battle isn't going to reach them, so I might as well move them out. And then uh, we have our commander in chief. Let's go ahead and move the commander in chief up to here. That way, if these guys break, I've got a backup plan. All right, have we moved everybody? I think we... Oh, yeah, these guys. Is there... Some more light javelin, man. Yeah, let's shoot these guys again. Doing a lot of damage over there. Oh, these are light archers, too. Great, shoot at these guys. I wonder if 
I could charge. No, I can't charge him. All right, just shoot at these guys. Yeah, they're starting to take some casualties. Okay, that's everybody. Good turn. We've been long worrying about that. They are they are greatly disadvantaged though, so maybe maybe we'll force them back. And then our longbow men can go back to shooting, which is what they do best. Yeah, that's a very tough hill. Once you get up there, it's going to be hard to remove troops that are up there. Our knights are taking some annoying casualties from those light archers, javelins. Hey, there's a fragment on that guy. He's falling back in disarray. broke and that's unfortunate now I kind of wish that I hadn't turned this guy yeah I'm so hard to get this guy off that hill uh, uh oh okay so his noble cavalry broke my Irish disrupted my Irish foot meanwhile this battle of attrition is going on that's a disrupt That is... Oh, he held firm on that one. That's a disrupt... That's a fragment. Alright, his line is starting to break in a couple of places. You see the fragments. Alright. Yeah, so these guys... It, you know, it's, um, these knights have like 115, so these guys shoot me for 4 and 6. They do that for a few turns. Eventually, I don't have knights anymore. So we need to get into combat so we don't, we're not getting shot by these javelins anymore. So let's charge them here. Let's keep shooting these guys. Taking a lot of javelin casualties. So that unit is, yeah, that, that banner is very tattered. So that unit is about to be non combat effective. 69 to 0. Ugh, indecisive. I'm thinking that was, I probably should have turned, I should have turned this way. I'd rather send the cavalry over here. Because I think we're going to wipe be able to handle these. Uh, yeah, I'm going to face... Well, might as well go over here. I'll just get shot at more. I don't know. What are these guys? These are light archers. Javelin men, javelin men. Okay, yeah. I don't want to go there because then the javelin men will block me. Let's go here. And then we'll be able to gallop off this way next turn. All right, so it's looking good on the left flank. I'm pretty sure we'll eventually triumph here with heavy cavalry versus unarmored infantry. That definitely doesn't go well for the unarmored infantry, so... Um, let's see if we can break these guys. There they go. So we've almost taken this hill. There's some long bowmen. 10 to 32 is amazing. Yeah, let's uh let's I I I, I don't want to push into here because that'll close the gap <laughs> and I won't be able to shoot anymore. 
Actually, I don't know. Maybe we charge. Yeah, we could. Actually, better would be to charge with these guys. Although we're we're going uphill, it's not going to be pleasant. I think we'll charge with these guys uh, next turn, and then these guys will be able to flank them. So I'm just going to turn this way and keep the lane open for for missile fire. Now over here, uh. I can't flank him now because, as I predicted, these guys moved into here and, and hit me with their zone of control. However, these guys can can do the flank, but then I miss out on charging these delightfully about to break Irish Kerns. Mm. Yeah, that's a rough one. Let's see what the odds are here. I lose the impact, but but we'll definitely probably win the melee. These are my spearmen versus its kerns. Yeah, this is always a crapshoot because here's the thing: if I lose the impact phase and take a uh, get disrupted, then the, those melee odds are not going to be in my favor anymore. In fact, they'll probably flip to the kerns. So this battle is a lot more dicey than it looks. It's that it all depends on whether I can at least get a stalemate in the impact phase. So it's a bit of a die roll. Sure, I want to do a die roll right now. I'm just gonna turn and face him. Here, oh gosh, charge or flank? Charge or flank? I think we're gonna go for the flank. That's gonna drop him to just fragmented, and he breaks. Great. Okay. Well, that's super good. All right, here's this not-so-good battle. Let's see if we can at least keep stalemating this guy. Nope, we got fragmented, and he only loses three. That's bad. Yeah, these are some light troops. Let's scatter them away. Oh, goodness, we got a, got, we ca actually caught those guys, that's a surprise. And that allows me to move these guys up. Oh, that's an awful attack, I don't want to do that. But these guys could hit these guys. Long term, that looks pretty good, although here's the problem, if I attack them and then these guys break, then his cavalry is free to hit me in the flank, which is bad. I could send my own cavalry through, but that's the same problem. But at least I have a chance of winning the battle quicker. Hmm, let me think here. I'm a little worried about winning the fight. If I win the fight, my knights go, might go charging off into his rear area, and he's got some more troops. He's got some more caval noble cavalry that could then surround my commander if he starts galloping off into the rear area and he's chasing these guys. Some of the, one of the worst results you can get with knights is winning, <laughs> because if you win and you pursue the guy off into God knows where, then that your knight is dead your knight unit is dead. So the, one of the most feared results with knights, I find, is winning instead of losing. Because winning could put you in a terrible position. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to move uh, the commander to here and turn this way. That way we can ch attack his commander. We can have a commander on, on commander action here. Possibly. So what we'll do here, let's move you to here. Yeah, we, now this attack becomes a lot safer, because my flank is protected. Alright. 
Turning up the hill isn't going to help me. Yeah, that's a bad attack. But I will face this way. Okay, these guys have to change their mind and flip back this way. This is a bad attack. I should have saved that for last. Oh, we fell back. Okay, that, at least that went well. We're not going to get rid of this guy. This guy is solidly on the hill. I've tried to swarm him off, but I haven't been able to. So my longbowmen are on their own up here. At least they're um, in an excellent defensive position. Alright, let's keep the uh, Battle of Attrition going here. Yeah, they're down to 144. Their strength is failing. Alright, more attacks here. Yeah, the casualty, casualty numbers we're getting are fantastic with these missile units. turn. What are we up to? Um, oh, yeah, let me move this thing down. Hold on. That way you guys... I realized this when I was making... I was transferring these videos to YouTube, and I realized I had done something terrible. I had put this here, and you guys couldn't see the morale bar. And I didn't realize that until yesterday when I was putting up the YouTube videos, and I said, oops. So I'm gonna move... We're gonna move the subscriber thing down to here. The follow, the follow bar down to here. The event list is what they call it. So that way you guys can now see the morale bars, which is very important. That was my bad. I should have never done that. But as you can see, we're at 11% versus 8% routed. So uh, we're actually winning ever so slightly. But a, a few of his guys are not looking too good. They're just a that close to breaking. Yeah, like, we can get these guys to break, clear them off this hill. Yeah, the whole left flank we're going to roll up, hopefully. And then and this is looking a little dicey up, up here on the hill, because this Irish foot, we couldn't dislodge them. And I'm afraid he's going to be able to uh, attack my, my longbowmen up here, sadly. All right, that's it for the turn. to charge me, which is interesting. We should have the advantage in the subsequent melee phases. There's a charge onto the longbowmen. They were greatly disadvantaged going up that hill, but now there are two people attacking the longbowmen instead of just one. We did manage to win, but he passed the morale check. There is a charge. Okay, that's into the un unengaged flank. Well, no, I guess it wasn't a flank. But that's fine. Oh, that's interesting. He, okay, that was a flank, but I don't think it's... Oh, jeez. <laughs> I guess he was getting tired of getting shot at. Here come his damn javelins shooting at my knights. Oh, see? See, enough... You did That happens enough time, and even knights are gonna get sick of it. So I gotta get that knight unit out of there. He finally breaks. Uh oh. But he, I, my commander's not facing him, so I can't immediately counterattack. All right, 
right, I think we got a fragment there from the crossbowmen, or the longbowmen. The longbowmen on that hill are doing amazing. That guy is annoyingly holding firm. Now he's disrupted. Now, the nice thing about this battle with the knights over here is... Oh, shit. Oh, he fell back. Oh, he fell back in front of my commander. Oh, goody. Goody, goody, I'll be able to charge him with the commander. Oh, that was amazing, the fact that he bounced off and went right into the, the front of my knights. <laughs> okay, that's going to be awesome. All right, we got to get this guy out of here. I don't like getting shot at. We need to get, get a move on. I need you over here to fight off these javelins. Yeah, it's the only way you can really deal with light troops is to send your own light troops. Otherwise, it's just frustration. Okay, now the good thing about these knights attacking this guy is that, that once we do finally win the battle and these guys rout, this guy will probably flee in this direction, which means our, our knights will also pursue in this direction, which is going to be actually useful because then they'll be set up to do some more flanks down the line. So... That's why the direction of your knightly attack is important because you want to you know your knights are going to end up pursuing the beaten foe because they are by nature impetuous. Don't be held, son of a bitch. Uh, we should have a pretty good advantage on this guy down the hill. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So he's not going to last too long, especially now that he's disrupted. Here, we're going to charge this guy here, and then next turn, this guy could flank him. But before I do that, let's shoot at him with the longbowman. Oh, ho. that was a beautiful shot. Now we charge here, 39 to 1. Beautiful. And then next turn, we should be able to get the flank. Uh, I think it would be fine to move this guy down here. That's going to set up a flank here, if need be. And that still leaves a lane of fire open for the longbows. These guys are going to go here and turn in... Oh, I can't... T t hold on a second. Can't I turn and face this way? If I go here, I should be able to get a free turn. I guess I don't get a free turn because... Maybe it's because my commander is... Yeah, usually you get a free turn, but I guess I don't. Where's, who's these, who's this unit's commander? I should be getting a free, a free left turn. For some reason, it's not letting me do my free turn. Disappointing. Yeah, usually you, if, if you have a commander, like, I think it's, yeah, this guy, but my commander is unengaged, so I don't know why it's not giving me my free 45 degree turn. Oh, it's, I'm, un, I'm unmaneuverable. Never mind, I see exactly why. I am unmaneuverable. So even if you do have a leader in command range, an unmaneuverable unit doesn't get a free turn. Okay. All right, this battle is going, still going well. Uh, this battle is going pretty good. Uh, let's charge his uh, noble cavalry. <laughs> commander versus commander here. Richard de Clare versus Ruardi Ua Kanchuber. Oh, he ran away, son of a bitch. What a clever, what a clever bird. Okay, that's bad because now we can maybe get two to one. Yeah, 
is not ideal. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm gonna get peppered by these javelin men. But I wanna charge this guy, so I'm gonna turn this way. Yeah, I wanna break this guy, then hit this guy in the in the rear for a massive flank attack. This guy, I don't know who's gonna. This guy could come charging down the hill, but he's gonna be, he's actually disordered because of the rough terrain, so. It's hard to say who would win this battle. It's a little, it's a little iffy. Okay, let's move you back to here, and I'm gonna face this way. That's gonna keep, that's gonna keep him from charging my longbowman because he knows he'll get flanked if he tries that. We're at a disadvantage here, sadly. Got a draw, which is good. Now, the Longbowmen, they're getting uh, attacked up the slope by two units, although one of them is disrupted. Let's go, or fragmented. Let's see if we can rout them. Nope, not quite. And then this guy. Actually, he's not disrupted. But we still have a big advantage. All right, again on this guy who we're gradually grinding down to nothing. Yeah, he's at close to close to auto break. I, I'm thinking at this point. Maybe maybe make those javelin men flee. God, our casualties are 11% for both sides. This is turning into a hell of a battle. All right, let's go ahead and charge with the my Kerns into his... Kern. Well, first let's give it give him some javelins. Or arrows, whatever. I could charge these. Shoot at them. The problem with, with attacking these guys is if I push them back, then these guys can come down the slope and flank me. So that's actually kind of a bad idea. Let me just, uh, Attack them. Ugh. All right, we held firm, so I think we're gonna have the long-term edge there. But now a couple of my archer units can't see anything. Go ahead and shoot these uh, light javelin and see if we can get them to break. Guys around the flank. You stand your ground and try to rally. You're wait you're gonna flank next turn. You're gonna st hold still. You're gonna watching those guys. Okay, that's it. That's everybody. Eleven percent. This battle is right on the edge. He's got a whole mess of uh, Irish back here, though he hasn't committed yet. Huge reserve on the right. So yeah, that's why the right side is looking a little dicey, although these longbowmen are doing amazing work up on this hilltop. Absolutely incredible. Oh shoot, that guy rallied. That's unfortunate. We're about to charge him. Ugh, taking too many javelin hits there.
That guy charges me and breaks. That was a very risky attack because he was already disrupted. Ouch, but we held firm. Held firm. Draw. Oh, that's also a draw. This guy, this guy here must be close to auto break. Oh, we disrupted there. Big, that was a big disruption. Up on the hill, where's the longbowman? 11, he breaks! The longbowmen now only have one opponent. Oh, massive amount of fragments going on over there. And disrupts from Chain Panic. That was indecisive. This guy can't hold on much longer. There he goes, he's breaking. And there go the knights off in pursuit. And they're going the correct direction. Instead of going off into the to, toward the map edge, they're going closer into the battle. That's why I think when you uh, attack with, with knights, it's important to get the direction correct. If you attack this way, then you run the risk of your knights running off into someplace completely useless. But whereas if you attack in this direction, when they finally stop pursuing, they should be in a much more useful place. So the direction you attack with your knights is, is important. You can kind of see this here with the commander. The commander now has gotten himself into a bit of a pickle. Okay, that guy broke. Alright. We're up to 29. That was a big turn for us. Uh, yeah, that was actually really, really good. Keep moving these knights away. So you're still considered pursuing. You're still considered considered pursuing. Let's move this knight here. deal with these damn light troops. Actually, let's do the flank here, because this might actually clear the entire hillside for us. There he goes, and that's that's it for that. We've got the we've taken the hill. So go ahead and turn you this way. Longbows. move you to the edge of the hill so you can get some better targeting. Oh, here's a flank. This guy is going to allow a flank down the hill. Let's take it. He breaks. And he disrupts. So this guy's going to attack this guy then. Well, hopefully keep me from getting hit by those javelins. All right, fragment. How about this battle? Let's see how it goes. That's a draw. Great. Let's try. Oh. Yeah, let's go ahead and engage these guys while they're still disrupted. Don't give them a chance to rally. Guys have all moved. 
Right, so these guys, instead of attacking my longbowmen, had to turn and face these guys, so that's fine. I don't think I want to attack them. The last time we did it didn't go so hot. This battle... Is at a disadvantage for us. But we got a precious, precious indecisive result there. Oh, okay, here's a problem. <laughs> Bit off more than I can chew, didn't I? We're facing down two commanders and three units of noble cavalry. So we're outnumbered three to one here, which is uh, somewhat undesirable. This would be a good time for the reverse move, I'd say. We'll take the cohesion check. We, Our commander-in-chief is there. He should be able to handle this. Good, 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 good. So that's going to definitely, hopefully, keep us from getting flanked. All right, brings us up to here. This guy has got to break now. He cannot go on fighting. Oh, he just got, he did. He's going on fighting. Eh. Still fighting. Well, here's the uh, longbowman, though. Longbowmen are clearly holding this hill. Hey, we broke him off. The Welsh Longbowmen. Oh, more chain panics. We finally broke that guy through a chain panic. This guy's now disrupted. Oh, maybe we can get him now. Maybe we can get him now because he's disrupted. Oh, we're still at a disadvantage, but... If we can get a guy around to flank him... Oh, yeah, this might be the way to do it. Let's strike while the iron is hot. There you go. Got an indecisive result. That's perfect. Maybe we can win this battle now. Now that it's broken. Okay, good news. Um, we're above 40% now in the Irish. We're going to win this battle if these results hold up. So let's wait and see if they hold up. Move you here. Oh dear, these longbow men can't see anybody. Move these light archers to here. Right now they have some targets to shoot at. Like like this one. All the disruptions and then we can move our longbow into here can they shoot anybody down the road no no they can't see anybody yeah i don't think i want to do that Let's see what the uh, battle here is looking like yeah 24 to 6 advantage us plus his banner is in tatters so i think we're looking good there Shooting at this one. Let's see if I can get him to break. My javelins. And ooh, 60 to 18, not bad. Get that commander unit. Yeah, I can't shoot anybody with the longbows, sadly. Right, now I'm gonna take this um, fragmented guy, and I'm gonna move him to here, and then so he can eventually flank this guy, although I can't charge until he un... Yeah, I can't charge until he unfragments, which he'll hopefully do soon. Because then I could flank this guy and get him to drop down to uh, red status. But right now things look good, yeah. Just keep facing that guy. That's the only guy who hasn't moved. So if this holds up, we have won the battle. Uh, he has to get um, some rallies or he has to knock this number. He has to route some of my guys so this 30 goes 
differential goes down below 25. So let's see if that happens. But yeah, huge chain panics last turn. Turn the tide here. Commander's getting javelined. Okay, he went, chased off my javelins. He's coming back up the hill to take on the longbowmen again. Uh oh. That's a rear attack. Oh no, on my infantry unit. Who is still holding firm, amazingly. Yeah, that's probably the battle then. He needs to get some more breaks on my guys and he's not getting them. Nope. 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 That guy breaks. Oh god, it's over for him. It's all over for the Irish. Major victory for Robert de Clare here in the Anglo-Irish Wars. And there you have it, guys. An Anglo-Irish victory. Let's see what the Butcher's Bill is. 47% on 7,628. Not bad. It was a tough battle, but yeah, it was pretty close there for a while. We took 11% casualties. It was at 11% tied there for a while. And then all of a sudden we got the chain panics. And the Irish side just started collapsing left and right. Okay, guys, uh, this would be a good time for me to take a quick break. And when I come back, we will do stage nine, which looks to be against against rebel forces. Oh, yeah, more Irish. Yeah, it looks like it's, it, there's an Irish rebellion, it looks like. But we'll get into that when we get back. So guys, stay tuned. I'll be back in just a bit. <laughs> 